Joining us now in our DC studio for pro-life analysis is Marjorie Danenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony List. Marjorie, great to see you. Catherine, always love being with you. First of all, I want to get your quick reaction to this bill. Your group, yeah. the Susan B. Anthony List, outlined your concerns about the Equality Act. What should our viewers know? Well, it's really simple. The, uh, pr the idea is to revise the Civil Rights Act um, and the definition of sex to include, I'm just going to read mm -hmm. it, pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical condition. Hmm. Related medical condition, uh, the courts have interpreted as meaning abortion. Hmm. And since that's the case, it also requires practitioners of medicine to provide an abortion regardless of their conscience. So the most important thing is they would revise our civil rights laws to include abortion. Simply a non-starter. Nobody in the pro-life movement could ever support it. And frankly, even if you aren't in the pro-life movement, you shouldn't be for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. want to get your analysis on another major pro-life story. Yeah. This week, the Supreme Court came to a divided decision regarding a pro-life Indiana law. The high court upheld one provision requiring the humane and dignified disposal of aborted baby remains. But within the same opinion, the court denied review of Indiana's prenatal non-discrimination law. This law protects unborn children from eugenic and discriminatory abortion. Both were signed into law by then-Governor Mike Pence. In his concurring opinion, Catholic Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas wrote, The use of abortion to achieve eugenic goals is not merely hypothetical. The foundations for legalizing abortion in America were laid during the early 20th century birth control movement. That movement developed alongside the American eugenics movement and significantly Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger recognized the eugenic potential of her cause. Marjorie, what is your reaction to this Supreme Court announcement this well, week? Well, you reading this after reading this this morning sent chills mm -hmm. down my spine. I mean, nothing has come from a Supreme Court justice of that caliber connecting all the dots about what abortion means for the outlier, the person in the shadows, the minorities. Any, anyone who feels like they might be a weak link in society is a target of abortion. And this Supreme Court justice, mm -hmm. Thomas, mm -hmm. just communicated that beautifully. Yeah. So in the decision itself, um, he, uh, he concurred with the idea to let's consider this later. What he's saying is, and, and with the rest of the court, we want this issue to percolate. There are other non-discrimination bills coming forward. One is in Kentucky, one is Ohio, a little closer to the court. I think, and I think it, a lot of people believe that once it does, that we may find that the court will take it up and it will be better considered. Okay. So um, while it's not the news we were looking for, definitely it is, you know, it's a, it's a good sign. And it's really important to hear this, that what they're looking for, is there, is there any constitutional reason that this um, issue can't be considered? They did not find that. Mm -hmm. they, fi they found we'd rather hear this issue percolated up. The companion decision, the other right. decision that they came up with, uh, and, and, and the second um, law signed by the vice president and former governor Mike Pence, the fetal remains, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. bill, mm -hmm. um, when it was um, reversed, it reversed the Seventh Circuit decision and it said there is a rational basis for a state to make such a humane decision. There's nothing in the Constitution that says that a state can't um, prepare for the for the final resting place of children who were aborted it is an extension of who that state is constitution says nothing that would belie that idea and i was going to ask you to remind our viewers about the vice president's role in this law he mm -hmm. really was behind both of these yeah i talked to him when we were kind of both grappling with okay now what do we say because of course while you're the president and the vice president you don't know what's happening coming out of the supreme court right. so we talk about this and how beautiful the pro-life movement is how it's come together yeah. particular moments how his career so far before this yeah. was born for this moment and uh, and these are the fruits of it i mean i think we were both disappointed as the movement would be that they did not take up the non-discrimination case mm -hmm. but one thing it does show is that who we elect really 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 matters and what do you think this signals about the supreme court mm -hmm. um, and how the justices might consider and weigh other pro-life bills I think that we should put a pause button on what we think, honestly, because I think this is a, probably a better sign than a bad sign. I think that, to be honest, I think that we're, you know, that we have a very kind of cautious, cautious chief justice mm -hmm. um, who perhaps, who knows, I don't know, I'm not a mind reader, but maybe he doesn't want to 
come up with a decision like this right before an election? I don't know. Like, I really don't know. But what I do know is that the um, is that there is a preservation of the decision until, frankly, what, what might be a better time. And we have been dealing with this horrible issue, mm -hmm. this death in the middle of our culture and mm -hmm. our souls every single day for almost a half of a century. I think it's important for us to be a little bit patient for a little bit longer, mm -hmm. and I have great hope that everything is going to turn uh, towards his purposes. I really do believe that's true. And I'm not a wild-eyed optimist, Catherine. I think you know that. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a good place with just a little bit more patience. There is a lot going on. We are so grateful you took the time to be with us and provide this analysis. Marjorie Dannenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you. Thank you, Catherine.